All right, here we go, episode 12. I have been off for a while, but we are back. We're going to go full force. we got a lot of stuff coming in, but as always, first I want to thank all of our YouTube members. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your contributions. It's one of the reasons I uh, continue on with this, so thank you again. You guys are amazing. Um, if this is your first time at the channel, or if you're returning, and just haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button so you get alerted whenever we get... A new video out we're gonna try and keep pushing these videos out keep it going if you got any requests leave them in the comments below but without further ado let's go all right for our miniature obviously if you're playing this game you know you have to build it if you got the armory like I did um, you can change out the weapons, but the thing's way too flimsy if you change out the weapons So I just picked the ones that I liked the best which were the base ones anyway and put those on there Next uh, you're going to prime all of your miniatures and if you have Instagram hit follow us on Instagram at nerd.nights We do Pokemon and miniatures on there and we're going to take an airbrush and we're going to spray all this thing over with black. Nothing too crazy. Next we're going to take a makeup brush and we're going to use the mechanic of standard gray and we are going to dry brush the entire miniature to give us that nice zenithal highlight. All right, the first thing we're going to start with is our cloak. It is the focal point, I believe, of this miniature. It's the biggest surface area, so we're going to work on this first. We're going to take that Fenrisian gray, and we're going to put it all over the cloak area of our miniature. You might need two coats. Let the first coat dry, and then put the second coat on after that. Once that is dry, we're going to take some Ushabdi bone and we're going to put a dry brush all over the raised areas of our miniature. Now, don't worry if you get this onto the other portions. It's not that big of a deal. It's just going to give it more highlight anyway, so don't worry about it. For another added highlight, we're going to take some Prexetti White. If you just don't have this color, you use white, doesn't really matter. And again, dry brush this onto our area. Next, we're going to take about a 50-50 mix of Corax White and Lamia Medium. We're going to mix these together in your well. And then we're going to put it all over our miniature. Now, this is going to create that white, dirty color. That's why the Corax White is probably the best color for it, because it's not really a white. It's a grayish white, so it works out perfectly. Next, we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Lamia Medium and Nolan Oil. Mix those together and then put that all over. And ensure you don't want it to be too strong. That's the, the main part of it. Now 
Now one's completely dry, we're gonna take a dry brush of Praxetti White. You can probably see a little bit of that blue sticking out some points, but that's okay, it adds a little bit of flavor to it. Again, you don't want it to be completely crisp. You want it to look a little rugged and dirty. Next, we're going to work on the base colors for our miniature, and the first one we're going to use is Cadian Flesh Tone on our small bit of flesh face that you can see. Next is one of the newer colors from Citadel, which is Corvus Black. It's not really an Abaddon Black, dark black, but it's a grayish black. Perfect color for what we're trying to accomplish here for the face mask, part of the armor leather, and on the legs as well. Then for a lot of the armor bits onto our armor, we're going to use some Grey Knight's Steel, and we're going to put that onto our armored areas. For our belt straps uh, around the chest and the mid region, we're going to use some of that Rhinox hide. Then we're going to use some Iron Hands steel for the buckles that connect on our belt area. Then for our knives that are sticking out onto our uh, belt area, and you can even use this onto the knives that our Kerr is holding, we're going to use some our basic lead belcher. For our first pouch on the left side of our curve, we're going to use some of that Dryad Bark. And for our second pouches around the mid-region of our curve, we're going to use that Mornfang Brown. For our handles on our knives, we're going to use some XV88. And for our pupils, we're just going to use some pure white just to get some pre-area designated for our eye here in a moment. And finally, for our top of our chest plate, we're going to use some Ruin Lord Brass for the top of it. And for our wash step, we're going to use some Nolan Oil on all of our metal pieces. If you want to use some Agrax Urshay with it as well to really dull it down and make it a little bit more rustic look, you can as well.
And for all of our brown areas, again, you can use this on our metal as well if you would like. You can use some of this Agrax Earthshade to give it that nice earthy look, hence why it's called Earthshade. And for our skin, we're going to use some of that Reichland Flesh Shade we always use. With all of our components completely dry, we're going to use some Iron Breaker and use this onto the miniature on the belt buckle and all of the pieces for the leather. Do not use this onto the knives that he's holding. We're going to use it to do something else here in a second. For the top portion on our armor, we're going to use some uh, Grey Knight's Steel. Brighten it up just a little bit. For our two knives that our Kurt is holding, we're going to be using some Necron compound. And for the dark patches of armor we went over earlier, we're going to use some Iron Warriors to just make it a little bit brighter, but dull it down and keep it metallic looking. For a little edge dressing on our armor leather belt areas, we're going to use some Gorthor Brown. For our pouches, we're going to use some Scrag Brown just to brighten up just a little bit. And coming to the finish line, we're going to be working on the face. First one is a reapplication of Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone, Kislev Flesh, and then finishing off with Kislev Flesh. Take your time on it. Don't go overboard with it. Just get it nice and easy and in there. And make sure you are waiting for every layer to dry if you're going to do more than one layer, especially with the final highlight of Kislev Flesh to give it that extra highlights. Also, do not forget to put a black eyeball in the eye that you can see. For the base in the rocky area, just take a nice little bit of contrast paint and basilicanum gray and go over that rocky area just to kind of dull it down just a little bit. Followed by rattling grime on that bottom portion of our base. And the favorite part of painting this miniature, because it means you're done, is the rim of the base. We're going with Abaddon Black or whatever kind of black you have. Again, this is the uh, not too crazy, but easy tutorial on how to paint the Kerr. And it doesn't look too shabby, if you don't ask. Mind me asking, I guess you could say. Well, I want to say thank you so much for being here, being a part of this video. And again, I am back after a short stint in the hospital and some other things I had going on. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you so, so much for being a part of what I'm trying to make here. Please leave a comment. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and of course, subscribe. Until next time, paint on.